My next guest is going to be making his debut for Octagon coming up here March 2nd as part of their 54th event. It is Macwan Americani joining me here live from the car right now. Macwan, how are you? I'm good, brother. I'm good. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for uh, for taking the time. And for those wondering, we've got the photo up here. I know you're in the car right now. It's dark. Uh, but I wanted to start first with how did this all come together with you competing for Octagon, one of the biggest international promotions in the world? Uh, about Octagon, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm happy to join the bo uh, team. Uh, feels feels good. What what feels uh, even better is that I get chance to do what I love, and that's fighting. Absolutely. And, and obviously, the, the big opportunity here is the $1 million in, in crypto that, that's on the line here. How much was that uh, part of this as well, just the financial side of things? Well, yeah, uh, a lot of people have eyes on the price and uh, me, like I said earlier, uh, I'm, I can't wait to, uh, you know, fight. It's been over a year since my last fight. And uh, that's what, you know, gives me goosebumps I, I the money is nice but let me fight that's what i've been waiting for yes absolutely um and uh did you have other offers i imagine once you left the ufc there was probably a lot of interest in in other promotions having you uh, part part of their promotion well yeah i was uh expecting to fight last year so that was uh yeah there was some uh proposals from uh, another promotions but uh, I, I got along with Octagon pretty well I saw the owners they were pretty nice and uh, you know uh, they were good to me and uh, I thought that Octagon is in Europe and uh, they told me about the tournament so I was like uh, that sounds great because not a lot of fighters have that kind of a schedule that they are actually fighting four times in a year and they know what dates they are and even the opponents so that was pretty uh, clear to me where i'm going to fight and who i'm going to join um wh why haven't we seen you in so long uh, we, we talked a bit about the offers we talked about um obviously you leaving the ufc um what was what was sort of the, the main catalyst for you not getting to fight maybe as often as you wanted well, uh, I was in shape a long, long time ago. I was ready a long time ago, but uh, it, did, it wasn't a bad uh, thing either to, you know, get more extra time to prepare even better what I was, you know, half a year ago. And that's, those are the reasons why I'm, you know, so excited, you know, to uh, show after this long uh, career that uh, you know a lot of people may think that uh, they have seen the best of me but uh, I'm laughing at myself sometimes when I'm you know waiting for my opportunity to fight you know 2nd of March that it feels like this is my first professional fight okay yeah, it, it, very, very uh, big opportunity here, like you mentioned. And, and a tough opponent here, uh, Macwan, 13-1 uh, record. Uh, what do you know about your opponent, and how do you feel like stylistically you match up against him? Well, uh, I'm a bad matchup to everyone, you know. Uh, everybody struggles with me. It's it's more about, uh, I don't I don't care. I, I told uh, Octagon, and they told me many times, yeah, we know that you fight anybody, then... And you're not, you know, choosing your opponents. And that was my mentality then, and it is same now. I don't care who I fight. Even I, of course, I need to describe you about my opponents. Yeah, he's uh, he's short, he's strong <laughs> in certain positions. Yeah, he, in some people's eyes, he looks like a good striker. But to me, it's more of a show off, you know. Uh, me at the moment I'm not looking for judges to decide who will win I'm not looking for KO or submission I want to kill my opponent that's my mentality at the moment and that's why you know this feels like a new 
era of my my story of my career is beginning and, and a new weight class you're fighting at lightweight in this fight is this going to be your new weight class going forward or, or is it just for, 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 for this fight I don't know I, I feel really explosive uh, the strength is on point uh, I'm even more faster you know what comes to weight cut this is uh, like uh, Normally, when I was cutting to featherweight, I had to start, you know, to cut, uh, you know, my weight was tight when I was around uh, 71 kgs. So now, basically, by eating uh, just, you know, good food and uh, healthy food, it feels like my weight has dropped to the level where I need to be and uh, yeah I will have you know few kgs of uh, you know cutting from the liquid uh, from my body but it feels like you know uh, how can I say uh, I won't be uh, less powerful than any other lightweight fighter in the world so basically I, I feel I might have found my new weight class yeah yeah, we're excited to see you uh, at, at 155. Should be, should be great. Uh, tell me a bit about training camp. Who were some of the main training partners helping you get ready for this fight? Well, the camp was uh, like there was nothing else in my life than my kid and training. That's it. No, uh, there was no. Uh, of course, I was enjoying the training because I was in a good shape all the time. No injuries. Whoever I was sparring, I told them before the sparring, I said, let's go hard. And they were like, they got immediately like they were in, uh, they got a bit of shock that, uh, why, uh, why did I uh, comment uh, like that before a sparring? Usually sparrings are like, uh, they are, uh, uh, we are, a friend. it's a friendly sparring, but uh, I think I have passed that moment in my life where I had a bunch of, you know, friendly sparring. So I was like, to every sparring partner, I said, let's go hard. And every sparring that I had, I told the guys afterwards, I said, don't be sad. You're not a bad fighter. I'm just at the level where I should be. And when I was sparring, it was mean. It was, you know, I didn't try to injure anybody. I didn't want to send anybody to the hospital. But honestly, I didn't get any re-sparring after those sparrings. I, mm. the, the sparring partners, they gave me excuses that I have this, I have that. I was like, no worries. Uh, I have done, you know, a bunch of sparrings in my home. Uh, gym so uh, I don't want to reveal who I was sparring but in my in my head I was thinking it doesn't matter do I spar uh, top level in the world or do I spar with the top level in Finland the results will be the same but the training camp man the words can describe how ready I feel you know, this mm -hmm. fight is not, I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking to send somebody to the heaven. I know these are rough words from a fighter who should be respectful for another fighter. But, you know, we are in a, in a sport, in a, we have a job where we need to, in a rough way, our job is to kill and not each other. And me i'm not i'm not going there to show people that how uh, how uh, technical i want to be you know mm -hmm. of course my fight q iq is on point but i'm looking for a, for a real fight a fight where if i could describe it is like if you're living in a jungle and another person comes in front of you and you start to fight, you won't start to dance around. You will attack 
each other immediately. That's what I'm looking for. Absolutely. And, and we're excited for it. Um, I, I got to ask, obviously, uh, with your training, I know you don't want to reveal who you train with. W was there any training at all with Conor McGregor or is he kind of doing his own thing right now? Uh, I think he is doing his own and uh, he is uh, selling a lot of his skills. But me, um, uh, to me, the, I know there will be uh, headlines and uh, there will be a lot of, uh, you know, media will get interested, a new hype will be built after this fight. But me, personally, I don't care about that. I don't mm -hmm. care about the price money. I don't care about Octagon, Tip Sport or game, uh, UFC. I want to fight anybody. If it's Mohamed Mashaev next, let it be. And I will tell, I will show this person and the whole world why my words are so big at the moment you know that's why i'm like i feel like enough with the talking let's fight yeah and it's coming up here soon on on a march 2nd um how do you see the fight playing out on march 2nd how do you how do you see it going down how i see it is that this is like a father and a son <laughs> this is how i see it like a father who is teaching his kid how to fight Okay. And he will realize very soon in that fight that then this is another level of fighting. This is another level of athlete. I'm not coming to this fight without looking everything, everything that possibly can be that can make me, you know, the winner. Um. I don't know if you saw in the UFC last weekend, we have a new featherweight champion, your old division, uh, Ilya Taporia knocking out Alex Volkanovsky. Did you happen to catch the fight or, or see the highlights? Uh, I need to be honest. I haven't seen the fight and I see the result. I hear the results now. I haven't seen or I haven't heard anything. I have been out of the social media. Mm -hmm. I don't spend time anywhere else than I'm living in the moment, I'm focusing on the fight like a laser. Okay. Well, did, did that surprise you at all? Just because Volkanovski's never lost at featherweight before. He lost at lightweight in his last fight. But uh, just your reaction to finding out that there is a new champion in Ilya Taporia. I think it's well earned. He's, uh, he's a kryptonite for Volkanovski because of his style. You know, he's also short hard to you know take down hard to control on the ground and when you have deadly punches where you can really fast get the uh, get the control of the fight and that's something that Volkanovski has have done to the other people but I think that there was a uh, the hunger of uh, Ilya was you know more than he, he wanted this more. He was, you know, he, 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 it's not that he was training just this fight camp for that fight. It's, it's, it was his whole life. What do you make of uh, comparisons to Conor McGregor, your friend and teammate? Because uh, obviously, Taporia kind of called his shot. He also took the belt from Volkanovski uh, pre fight. I don't know if you saw any of that, but uh, they're, they're making comparisons to Conor McGregor. What, what do you think of that? Well, uh, I think. Uh, you should never underestimate uh, Connor, mm -hmm. uh, even though he is jumping around doing everything what athlete can possibly do in his life. Mm -hmm. But I think that, uh, yeah, we will probably never see that fight. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, what about you? A, a win here on March 2nd. Is it just about keeping active, uh, Maquan, at, you know, get, getting more fights with Octagon? What, what do you sort of see the rest of your career looking after this fight? Well, uh, I want to fight this fight. I want to fight the whole tournament on the same night if, I, if it's possible. Well, basically, let's go uh, fight at a time. So let's uh, focus on this one. Let's... Uh, clear this one and then we move on but uh, the idea is that uh, as a fighter I want to see who is the best in this planet and if I can reach that goal 
I will try my best. I'm not, uh, you know, I won't get satisfied with uh, being a tip sport game changer champion. I want more. If it's in octagon, let it be. But I want to raise the bar. My last question, I have to ask this uh, as I'm Canadian and our big sport here in Canada is hockey. Do you watch hockey at all? You know, being uh, being from Finland, uh, do, you, do you still uh, keep, keep tabs on uh, on hockey at all? Yeah, when it's uh, when there is a world championship in ice hockey games, yes, I do watch. And uh, we have also, always, uh, uh, there is always some drama with Can Canadians in ice That's hockey. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> except you and I got along here today, Macklin, so that's good. It we, just, are, it just, we are friends. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, uh, it's coming up here March 2nd. It is Octagon 54. Macklin, thanks so much for doing this. I know you have a busy camp. If there's anyone you'd like to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors or any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last word. Uh, I want to thank everybody who has been uh, helping me and who really wanted my best. I know I've been uh, struggling in my life and uh, not I haven't, you know, uh, been at my best all the time. I haven't been, uh, you know, uh, I haven't seen a lot of people, but I know that there is a lot of people in, around me who are really, you know, they really care about me. And I hope those people, you know, they hear me and uh, they know that I know. So thanks for those people.